using Simpson's rule, approximate the area under the curve f of x equal to square root of 1 plus x over the interval from 0 to 1 with n equal to 6. When we have that area, we want to find a bound for the error using the error rule for Simpson's rule. So first, let's sketch the picture. Now, we could use calculus. There's a lot of fancy ways to graph f of x equal to square root of 1 plus x. Okay, actually, you could just take the graph of square root of x, shift to the left by 1 because we're adding 1. On the inside, we do the opposite, meaning move to the left by 1. It's probably your best way to get the picture here. Or you just plot points, and then you just hold on until we get to the points we want for Simpson's rule. So let's see what we have. I have n equals 6. For Simpson's rule, n must always be even so that our pattern works. Then we have the interval 0, 1. So we're going to take the interval 0, 1, chop it up into 6 pieces. So my delta x is going to be 1 minus 0 divided by 6, or 1 sixth. So the points we'll be interested in are going to be start at 0, at a sixth gets me 1 sixth, at another sixth gets me 1 third, to a half, 2 thirds, 5 sixths, and 1. I break out the calculator. I evaluate each of those points through f. And then we get all these results here. So this is going to be the list of numbers I'm going to put into Simpson's rule. Okay, let's take a look at Simpson's rule. Simpson's rule, n is always even. And the way I remember it is the pattern is always a 1 on the ends, and then 4, 2, 4, 2, 4. And the point is it's always going to start with a 4, alternate to 2, and end on a 4. So I have that. And then the rule is take your delta x, divide by 3, and then, like the trapezoid rule, we're going to load up our first point, f evaluate on that, through f evaluate on the last point, and then your pattern goes in the middle, 4, 2, 4, 2, 4, 2, 4. I put my actual numbers in, so 1 sixth divided by 3, and then we load these in with our pattern. And the answer that comes out, rounded to three digits, is 1.219. To get the actual, we know from the fundamental theorem of calculus, number one. Okay, we, we're going to take the antiderivative of 1 plus x to the half, evaluate that at 1 and 0, take the difference, and then that'll be our area. So, any derivative of this is add 1, gives me 3 halves, flip it over, gives me 2 thirds. Of course, you have to worry about integration by substitution here, but we'll be fine, so I don't worry about it. That's going to give me 2 to the 3 halves of minus 1 times 2 thirds. Answer there is 1.21895. So if you notice, if I was to round that, this winds up being an exact hit. Let's see if that is believable, taking a look at what the error should be, or what the biggest the error could be. For Simpson's rule, the error bound is given by, take the length of the entire interval, raise to the fifth power, divide by 180, divide by n to the fourth, and then multiply that by max of the fourth derivative of f. Okay, it looks pretty ridiculous, but there you go. Let's take a look at this fourth derivative of x. So the idea is we just keep applying derivatives to our x plus 1 to the 1 half. So this one is going to be bring the half down, subtract 1. Bring the 3 halves down, subtract 1. Bring the 5 halves down, subtract 1. Until I wind up with a minus 15 sixteenths x plus 1 to the minus 7 halves. Okay, now we're going to take the absolute value so the minus sign doesn't matter. And I could pull the 15 sixteenths out and wait to see what happens when we get an answer for the x plus 1 to the minus 7 halves. Well, let's think about this. First off, we only care about the interval 0 to 1. So what's going to happen? I put in for 0, 
that's going to give me one. One any exponent gives me one back, so I get the point one there. We have a couple ways we could go from here. We could take the derivative again, and we would see that it's decreasing, but it's also easy enough just to think about it. If I take x plus 1, okay, if I take x plus 1 to the minus 7 halves, that's the same as 1 over x plus 1 to the 7 halves. So what happens? As I put in numbers that get larger and larger, they'll be bigger than 1. So if they're flipped over and raised to a larger power, as I go to the right, those numbers are going to get smaller and smaller. Okay, you can check that. At a minimum, you should at least check that when I put 1 in there, 2 raised to the minus 7 halves is going to be much less than 1. So the idea is this is going to be a decreasing function, and its maximum is going to be 1. So if I take the max of the absolute value of f to the fourth, we have the 15 sixteenths coming out. And then the max on the rest of this is just going to be 1. So we're going to get 15 sixteenths here. Okay, plug things in. 15 sixteenths is our max. The length of the interval is just 1. We have our 180. And then I'm going to take my n equal to 6, raise that to the fourth power. And then we get this incredibly small number, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 4. So we notice because I'm only using three decimal places, the actual and the approximation look pretty much the same. But that's only because I would only catch an error if I went out to about six or seven decimal places. All right, for memorization, definitely you want to memorize this if you're responsible for it. Okay, the error rule, you're going to have no choice but to memorize if you're responsible for it. There's no easy, quick way to rederive this. But for Simpson's rule itself, if you've got the trapezoid roll under your belt, this isn't so bad because all I need to change is the delta x over 2 goes to delta x over 3. That's not that radical a change. And our pattern for the trapezoid rule, which is 1, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 1, just turns into a 1, 4, 2, 4, 2, 4, 2, 4, always ends on a 4, and then a 1. So if you have the trapezoid roll down, Simpson's rule is just a couple more steps.